Coming up in the news, the Grand Bahama Port Authority outlining new investments earmarked for the city. Also, the GBPA expected to be the focus of a protest tomorrow in the downtown area. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Shashina Rolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news this evening, some good news coming from the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Officials are on the record tonight stating that the revitalization of Grand Bahama's economy is underway. A top executive is giving details of several investment projects that have already received approval. Sabrina Brown has our top story. Chief Investment Officer at the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Derek Newbold, says there are some exciting projects in the pipeline for Grand Bahama that should come to fruition soon. Mr. Roll and I just recently negotiated with government for a major financial institution to actually set up a wealth management uh, facility in Freeport. And, and that is coming, and that will be a calling card to other professional firms that Grand Bahama is open for business, and we need to see what's going on there. We recently approved a new distillery that should be opening in stores this month. Um, that has been something that's flown under the radar. The port executive is also excited about the transformation of the downtown area, which is already beginning to take shape. Right now, we have a new fresh market that's earmarked for downtown. The building next to that is under negotiation for a major mixed-use business center operation. So you're gonna see a major transformation come into downtown in very short order. In fact, by summer, you're gonna see the evidence of that. New developments are also unfolding at the new medical university on the island, which is now into phase two of the project. The entire build-out will be about $200 million when they're done, and they're looking to attract up to 1,000 students Think about the trickle-down economics of that, right? And the impact that's going to have on the local economy. Well, we have been negotiating with them on a major health um, healthcare brand that would actually change the dynamics of the health healthcare industry here in Freeport. Newbold believes the relaunch of the GB Ambassadors program is a vital promotional tool that is expected to attract new business to this northern island. That's a program where we educate and train Bahamians domiciled in countries around the world on how to properly sell and promote the city of Freeport and the island of Grand Bahama. And so look out for that. It's a very effective tool. Um, it's launched in all of the consulate offices and the embassies around the world. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Now, a local business leader who believes not enough is being done to revive Grand Bahama's economy is spearheading a pro protest slated for tomorrow morning in the downtown area. President of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Roll, says he was not contacted by any of the organizers about economic concerns. And he says port executives are always open to discussions with business leaders on the island. Uh, open. Uh, to constructive criticism. We welcome it. We want to be better. We want to be the best, uh, actually. And so if there's any issues with regards to our processes or anything in this group, we want to know. Um, and so I would encourage persons to come and talk with us. And that's why I think we're, that's why we're reaching out to the community, right? For those persons, for whatever reason, don't feel maybe comfortable calling us because it's very easy to contact us. Very easy to, to have a meeting with me. Um, so for those persons who may not feel comfortable speaking with any of the executive team or anyone in various departments, the managers, we intend to meet them um, at a particular site. And we, we have this initiative called Port Community Talk. Now, Roll says information about the GBPA and its responsibilities is accessible to all members of the public. About the Hawksville Creek Agreement, for instance, I want to encourage everybody, because I want persons to use wisdom, right, and, and own personal knowledge. I want to encourage persons to read. There's certain things in, in the Hawksville Creek Agreement, and I want, I want persons to actually read the, the agreement, all the amendments, and then decipher what is true. 
Now, Roll says information about the GBPA and its responsibilities. Once again, he says that is accessible to all members of the public. Now, ZNS News also reached out to the organizer of tomorrow's march, businessman Darren Cooper, who maintains that business owners and residents have been understanding and patient with the Grand Bahama Port Authority for far too long. He says the time has come to take a stand for the greater good of Freeport and the overall economy of Grand Bahama. I think now that so many persons are speaking out and we are now planning this uh, demonstration against the port that the port can find the time to do live protest, live press conference and also be able to give us um, all of these uh, initiatives or investments, possible investments that that has been on the books for God knows how long, how long we've been talking about the cruise port, how long we've been talking about the shipyard um, investment. And so Grand Bahama, I think um, we've been an understanding body for a while. Uh, we continue to watch uh, neighboring islands uh, that's connected to us, Abaco and Nassau, and even um, other family islands continue to expand, continue to uh, see new investments, continue to see um, new projects coming on screen. But Grand Bahama for the past 15 years have had nothing new. Cooper is also adamant that the Let's Take a Stand protest is all about business and the state of the economy and has nothing to do with personalities or agendas. Feels that knows it better than those who don't feel it and those who don't understand it. And so Grand Bahama is going to come together tomorrow. We're going to say to the Grand Bahama Port Authority, enough is enough. And from there, we're going to then reach out to the government and we will then uh, wait to hear the response based on the proposal that we are going to submit. We do have all of our permits from the Royal Bahamas Police Force and from the Health Department. We will follow all of the necessary protocols that is necessary to make sure that we continue to safeguard um, our residents. But we are coming together to take a stand. Now, tomorrow's march leaves at, uh, leaves at D's car rental building downtown at 10 a.m. In other news, students across Grand Bahama are back in the classrooms engaging in face-to-face -face learning, a decision that came from the Ministry of Education some weeks ago. Tonight, the Bahamas Educators, Counselors and Allied Workers Union shares how teachers in the educational sector are embracing in-person learning. Jay Philippe has more in this report. Students across Grand Bahama returned to school campuses for in-person learning a few weeks ago after the announcement was made by the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. President of the Bahamas Educators, Counselors and Allied Workers Union, Sandra Major, tells us that the decision to resume face-to-face -face learning has proven to be beneficial. Face-to-face -face truly makes a difference. When we were virtual, I'm going to speak for my classroom. Um, suppose the grade one, we had 30, 30 children, two, two classes combined. We would have like nine children on average come in. Since school is um, reopened face-to-face, -face, the entire class. So it really, truly makes a difference that they are now face-to-face. -face. Major adds that there has been some challenges. She says it appears that some parents have been completing assignments for their students while at home. Online, you were getting your hundreds and everything like that. And, and I'm talking every grade level, not just grade one, every grade level. And when you get back to school, you realize, no, we know it was your parent doing the work. We, we were grateful for the help from the parent. But we say to parents again, you can't do the work for the child because when they come, when they come to school, the challenge is now we have to repeat. We have to repeat the work. So we would have taught from September to December, but most of the work we have to repeat. But the good thing is everyone is coming to school and all the teachers prefer I'm doing a, just a quick survey of Martin Town Primary School this morning. Their preference is face to face. Teacher at Martin Town Primary, Doreen Forbes, who also serves as shop steward for the newly formed teachers union says both the students and teachers are enjoying being back on campus for in-person learning. For the most part, they're doing what needs to be done. They know that they have a lot to catch up with and they're complying for the most part. And um, the teachers themselves are happy that the students are back because the online was a challenge to some degree, even though they did get some work done. It was a challenge for them. And I think the teachers more so preferred the children being back in school. Now, even with students back on campuses on the island, parents are strongly encouraged to ensure that their children adhere to all protocols and that they are fully engaged in all aspects of their learning on and off campus. I'm Jay Philippe, 
ZNS Network News. And now to news from police officers from the Drug Enforcement Unit executing a search warrant netting a total of 12 illegal immigrants. The first incident taking place around 7 p.m. last night at an apartment on Coral Bay. Now reports say officers made a check of several apartment units and discovered several illegal immigrants including eight Jamaican males and one adult Guyanese female and child. As a result, they were all arrested and handed over to to the Bahamas Department of Immigration. Now, in the second incident that took place shortly before 1 p.m. yesterday in Abaco, a team of officers from the Marsh Harbor Police Station, while acting on information, proceeded to the area of SC Boodle Highway, where they observed two males who could not satisfy the officers as to how they came into the country. The two adult Haitian males were arrested and handed over to the Bahamas Department of Immigration. Officers also arresting a male for possession of dangerous drugs with the intent to supply. Police tell us that shortly before 5 p.m. yesterday, a team of officers from the Rapid Response Unit, along with the K-9 unit and K-9 Barco, executed a search warrant at a residence in Sea Grape. Officers reportedly found a black backpack containing a quantity of suspected marijuana. An adult male resident was arrested. A second suspect is being sought in connection with this matter. Meantime, police have issued a bulletin for 24-year-old Cadwell Carlton Cooper of Oats Lane. He is wanted for armed robbery. Police say he is 5 feet 6 inches tall, 150 pounds, dark brown complexion, slim built, with brown eyes, and is considered armed and dangerous. If you can help police locate Cadwell Carlton Cooper, give them a call at 350-3014 or 6 911 or your nearest police station. That's going to take us to our first break. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 